All right, hello everyone. Sorry about that. I think the stream is okay, but uh, it told me I was my stream status is poor. So please let me know if anything's going wrong. Everyone can hear me all right and everything. Great, okay. YouTube Studio is being kind of annoying, but good to hear that everything's all right. Hope you guys are all having a Good day, good week, and a good beginning of the year. Um, great. This is my first stream with my camera connected to a capture card. So it might be a little bumpy, but here it goes. So uh, we have our NK65 Entry Edition. This has been a long time coming. Um, I know I'm like, I don't know, a year late to the party, but better late than never, right? So let's get right into it. Uh, I guess before we do, um, disclosure that I bought this with my own money. Um, Novel Keys had no idea I was buying it. Uh, I, to the best of my abilities, they don't know how to connect my uh, customer information to my channel. <clears throat> All right. And while this is not sealed, I promise I didn't open this um, <laughs> uh, prior to stream. So here we go. Got a nice little sleeve here. Cool pattern, I guess. And then we got our sort of bare bones box. Oh, you know what? It is sealed. Nice. I don't have a knife, so I'll just go ahead with this. Oh, I didn't know it came with a bag. It's very nice. I appreciate it. That is not a sticker, or not your standard sticker. What the hell are those scissors? You know, I'm a bit of a scissors enthusiast. Um, this is actually not amazing, but it's better than, uh, you know, that's, that's a story for another time. The bag looks pretty good. It's sort of a fabric finish, real nice. Uh, the NK logo is misaligned, so that's something. Not really a big deal. I mean, I think you can just probably Try this off. Uh, I guess as a reminder, this was like $95, something crazy like that. You know, I didn't even know this came with a cable. I haven't even gotten through this and it's already seeming like like an entire package. This cable is braided. Uh, I'm not really a fan of braided cables because it's like, you know, why even bother? They're not functional, but it's kind of neat, I guess. Let's see if I can get it focused. The cable ends are molded on rather than heat shrink done, which is a big uh, pet peeve of mine. I, I don't understand how people can pay $70 for heat shrink cables, but you know, it seems, it seems all right. Um, got a little card. It's got indents from the cable. Uses VIA, ooh, warning. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch the video, sorry. And we have the keyboard itself. 
It looks... I don't know. It looks like a keyboard, I guess. This is actually not the smoke polycarve. This is the uh, regular polycarve. I wanted to compare with um, a CNC PC, but unfortunately I didn't bring one today, so this will have to do. Um, exterior finish looks good. Um, you know, I couldn't immediately tell you that this was injection molded. Uh, other than that, it's way clearer than usually uh, frosted CNC finishes. You know, this has more of a, what do you call, um, more of a transparent Game Boy kind of look, which is, you know, important for some people. I think if I was getting it for myself, I would have gotten the beige. Um, I got the Kara in that beige color, soya or something, soy boy. Um, but I specifically wanted to compare injection molded polycarbonate to regular polycarbonate, so here we are. I love this, but the 75% looks nice. It is the Xeno. Before anything, don't pay $950 aftermarket for it. It is not worth it. Um, if the plastic box feels cheap. Uh, let's see, NK87 was announced today, I saw that. But, I don't know. As per JYMB fashion, it'll probably take me like six months to get to it. Um, okay, before we assemble, I want to get into it a little bit. Uh, I know you can start plugging in switches right now. Um, which is cool for beginners, I suppose, but you know, I want to get into the internals. All right. We got Phillips head on one, two, three, four, five points on the plate. So these are screws connecting the plate to the bottom case. And we'll sort of discuss uh, the contentions mounting mechanism. I watched the Xeno video from uh, Man of Interest just uh, just yesterday or so. It's really great. The uh, the text to speech portions were a uh, kind of a lot, but you know. Interesting thing about these screws, they're, they appear to be like self-tapping screws or something. They don't, like, they, they look like furniture screws, unlike um, sort of the machine screws you see in regular customs. All right, with all the screws out, I wonder if we can just take it apart. What am I missing here? Is it just on really tight? It feels like it's gonna come out. I think the plate is attached to the top. It's moving, but it's really tight. <laughs> Did I miss a screw or something? Oh, I missed the screw. Sorry. This is what I get for not reading the instructions beforehand. But hey, why should I have to listen to instructions? 
I still feel like I'm missing something here. Oh boy. Okay. All right. It's out. Oh wow. Okay, right off the bat, this thing, it is the weight to this keyboard. I didn't expect it to be shaped like this. It's usually a flat sheet, but this is... <laughs> this feels really funny. It feels like uh, one of those silicone spatulas that I use in the kitchen. <clears throat> Get the weight real quick. Uh, let's see, about half a pound. Uh, 240 or so grams. And the rest of the board is... Four hundred sixteen grams, aka fourteen uh, ounces. So this is the the silicone inside is almost half of the rest of the keyboard. Yeah, if when you take it out, this just feels this is like it feels lighter than an HHKV. It's kind of <laughs> it's it's kind of alarming all right getting into it further taking a look at the top uh keyboard plate assembly uh it looks like i was mistaken in that the pcb will come out with the top uh with the bottom uh the pcb is attached to the plate um probably at these points here these indents you see um yep you got these um, and you probably need that to uh, hold the PCB in place when you're installing switches, um, which is, you know, that's how all the uh, hot swap keyboards do it. Um, it looks like we have 8, 10, 12 mounting screws, 8 uh, in front and back, and 4 on the sides. Um, that seems kind of unusual. Like, you know, we don't see... Oh, shoot. Okay, that's gone. We don't see side mounting points very often. Um, if you guys have seen my D65 video, it was kind of odd that that uses side mounting. Um, you can see this is once again sort of the self-tapping screw, the Alio. Um, I mean, which is fine, but yeah, I guess you would need it to uh, fit into these um, no insert straight into polycarbonate threads. The screws are mildly magnetic. The mounting points seem to be all right. I'll take a look after I take the screws out. I, I have heard that some of these are like strained and cracked or something. screws flying everywhere. Oh god. So I realized there have been different versions of these guys. So this is whatever the version the latest thing was. I got it like last week. And this, does anybody know if this is aluminum plate or steel plate? Man, I have not done my research on this. This kind of seems like it's aluminum. I think steel would be heavier. Um, 
you know, this looks like a keyboard. How long is the stream gonna be? I don't know. However long it takes. Probably an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Probably an hour, under an hour. And, oh, gross. The stabs come pre-lubed. Look at that. I got gross stab grease all over. And I think these smudges, that wasn't from me. I've been touching sort of the outside. So this is from Factory Gamer Grease. I will try out the, stream, uh, the, the stabs in a bit. Uh, they're not pre-clipped. Yeah, we can further see sort of the grease on the PCB. Um, I haven't seen a grease application like this on any other um, pre-built keyboard, so... I mean, I guess that's nice, but we don't really know how it'll turn out. It doesn't look super drenched in grease, so I'm I'm guessing it won't be super effective. Here's a top case by itself. Pretty flexible stuff. Oh wow. Very flexible. And let's examine the screw holes. Looks mostly all right to me. Oh, what is that? No, that maybe looks like a crack, but it is not. These LED holes are kind of cool, but I'm assuming it's not going to work out too well um, in a clear polycarbonate setting. Look at USB port when that is all together. It's gaping for now, but I'm assuming the bottom piece will come in handy somehow. So one sticking point with polycarbonate in general is that uh, like most customs I've seen don't use uh, metal metal inserts for these uh, screw threads and polycarbonate you know soft material so if you rebuild I don't know maybe a couple dozen times it's gonna be damaging the threads I think I've damaged the thread just now because I was screwing it the wrong angle, perhaps. Yeah, okay. Oops. Did I check out the Icky 68 Aurora from Wookiee Studio? I have not. I've been seeing that guy make the make the rounds and I don't know, even even getting myself to buy uh the Kara, the NK65 and the Portico, it's like ah you know like these aren't boards that I'm gonna use. These are boards I'm getting to bring you guys videos. So I don't know if I'm gonna be picking up another one of those. Yeah, I think the Kara has metal inserts. I am not picking up Bauer Light because I 
do not buy from Dixie Mick at this time. I'm still just so, so shocked about this thing. It's fun to play with. Uh, oh, interesting. These have little protrusions on them, six of them. Where do they go? Oh, they're little s holes throughout the PCB. And I'm guessing they're for alignment? They're not for alignment. So maybe it just pushes up against the PCB. Um, so this keyboard as you see it now is a top mount keyboard. Um, though it is a little, how do you say, I don't know, unconventional in that it uses side mounting points. Um, even having eight mounting points, I think, uh, on a form factor this small is going to be kind of stiff. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter because this is aluminum plate anyway, but it's something to keep in mind. And... I guess the contentious part is that there's no way to put this board back together without also putting in these screws from the top. They're, they're a fundamental part of getting this together and I'm not really a fan. See, I feel like if we had metal threads in here, this would be a lot easier. And I, I, with this electric screwdriver, I feel like I'm just breaking it. So, when it comes to mounting, I would say that the strongest... If there are multiple mounting uh, mechanisms in play at once, the, the, the stronger or the more stiff of the two will just overpower it, so it doesn't really makes sense to say it's a hybrid mount. This is practically just a tray mount keyboard. These top mount holes, I'm speculating, uh, won't do anything that a top mount keyboard does. So, I mean, they, they might as well take it out. Uh, well, I mean, you wouldn't have good marketing that way, I suppose. <laughs> All right, so that was the assembly. Not really super special. Um, it is an injection, injection molded keyboard. Uh, like someone in the chat said, the USB port is now fully covered by the bottom, which is nice. Um, there's so much support going on in here. There's upward pressure uh, possibly being applied with the uh, internal silicone piece. There's downward pressure with these screws and then there's upward pressure with the top. So I'm ex fully expecting a incredibly stiff typing experience. It looks like you guys are just having a miscellaneous discussion about keyboards in the chat, so I guess I'll just continue. So today we're going to be using stock Gateron Blues, which are my new favorite switch. This is sort of what it sounds like. If you couldn't get a good idea, here's what it sounds like. Here's what 2 sounds like. Turn to Old Faithful, stock get around your list. Here we go. So I guess the, the big advantage is that you can just stick these on without having to worry about the plate sort of, uh, uh, the PCB sort of moving uh, with the switches being installed, which is a, sort of a problem with other hot swap boards that don't have assemblies that connect the uh, PCB to the plate. What's my daily driver? Uh, lately I've been using uh, Exclusives E6.5 uh, in large part due to the fact that it's plastic and 
it can survive shocks. And also it has my favorite tactiles, which are KO Pro Purples. Why do I like flexible typing? Um, I don't know, because I like it. I, I like the sort of the vibrations that I feel uh, when I bottom out. Um, that, that feels, uh, I don't know, it feels like more character than solid mounting mechanisms. I never have any problems with shocking boards. Um, I don't know, I, I, I seem to be just prone to shocking for some reason. Seems like I might not have enough. NK says to press the back of the socket when you put switches in. Oh, I see. So there are only two screws holding the PCB to the plate. So I guess uh, outside of these regions, maybe around here, when you push the pr uh, switch in, uh, the, the PCB might sort of buckle backwards. Um, it's probably not a big deal. It'll probably work, but Mike probably says that to sort of reassure the the newcomers who might not know, who might be shocked that uh, the board is not working. I really hope I have no switches here. Why would I use the stock steps? Well, so this board markets itself as the as like. A complete package, right? It comes with a bag, it comes with cable. Um, there have been some group buys that um, give us switches as well as keycaps, so I think it's only fair that we judge it with the stock stabs, um, at least at least initially. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm damaging a lot of the switch pins here. Like something about the sockets feel a little uh, tougher than usual. Do I have a preferred keycap profile and material? For now, I like cherry. And material, material doesn't really matter to me. Um, texture. Texture-wise, I like sort of a smooth, silky, matte finish. That texture I was able to get when I sanded um, a set of old uh, Cherry Profile caps with 200 grit sandpaper. I thought the NK65 doesn't support PCB mount. It apparently does. These are PCB mount switches. I think if it didn't support PCB mount, that would be kind of controversial as an entry level keyboard in the enthusiast market. Are Getaron Yolos my favorite switch? Not at all. I use these because they're cheap and I can use them as control across all of my switches, uh, all of my keyboards. Oh, uh, PCB mount stabilizers. I didn't check when I had the PCB out. Let me see. Are there holes? I'm getting grease all over my hands just for you guys. There are not holes for PCB mount stabilizers. Oh my god, it's disgusting. Oh, I know there's only one. I, I've seen like one aftermarket set of plate mount stabilizers. Maybe that's 
where the question comes from. I think I saw them in different colors. I'm not going to lick my hands. If or when I make a lubing guide, the primary goal of that guide will be to not get lube on my hands. Secondary being lubing your stabilizers. I absolutely despise having lube on my hands. Any experience with Gap Black inks? Yes. I think they're, they're a good switch. I like them. Uh, I like to use them on stiffer plates because they're just heavy enough that I don't bottom out on them. Oh, I'm not going to have enough. It's too bad. Guess these boys will have to come back out. Are those milky yellows? Uh, I don't know what the kids call it nowadays, but these are black bottom, milky top, Gateron yellows. Okay, I, I promise this wasn't, this wasn't planned. <laughs> hey, you know, this, it doesn't sound, I'll have to, I'll have to test with my headphones off, but. Through my headphones, it doesn't seem that bad. Actually, this sounds pretty bad. Oh, I see this has the cursed 65% layout. T U E up. The cursed Tata 68 layout with the three one new keys over here. I, I don't think that's the best looking 65% layout, but I don't know. May, maybe it was determined that this is easier to get key sets for than the uh, 1.5U alternatives. What's so great about a blocker? Oh, you know, I thought this board had a blocker for some reason. It's almost like I knew nothing about this keyboard when I bought it. I think blocker bad because it doesn't look good. Blocker equals good, only in some cases, like the D65. I like the blocker there, because it works with the rest of the asymmetrical whatever is going on in that board. But for stuff like, I don't know, E6.5, uh, I don't know if it works super well there. Just like, let's have a piece there for the sake of having it. Did you happen to purchase a Rama Jewels? I did not. It seemed way too expensive for for like I w and, and I wasn't super interested in it I guess that's Rama stuff in general or stuff that goes through Rama like the only design I like from Rama is the M60A all the other stuff it almost follows a dif different design language Uh, I, I don't know if you're missing out on a whole bunch by not having a Rama board. Like, they look pretty good if you like it. And they feel alright, their finish is good, I suppose. Um, but in the, at the end of the day, they're just regular keyboards uh, that are very often meant for sort of people who are 
n not exactly into participating in the hobby. Um, that's that was, has always been the vibe that I got from Rama boards. Super. Uh, I'm never gonna get this done. Yep. All right. Almost there. Tab and page up, please. Any page up. Are those stock switches? Yes. You must be new here. Page up, that's not the correct profile. Oh, there we go. And I guess we have our contentious issue here. We have the alpha tilde, uh, alpha pipe and mod pipe. And we have the alpha tilde and mod tilde. Why don't we make everyone mad? Oh, you know what? I think the other way around is even worse. Oh, check that out. Pretty good, right? <laughs> no, no accent. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Hear me out. Forget about the meta and look at it for a bit. Taking a second look at it, I don't think it looks that bad. You know, like we got, we got a whole bunch of mod color on the right side because it's 65%. So, you know, we have to have the alpha color sort of pierce into this portion. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? It does not look very pugger, man. Don't you know you're not allowed to say that word anymore? Here's our finished keyboard. I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks really good on camera. In person, it looks like a regular keyboard. But like, I like this black uh, plate coming through, through the uh, clear body. Um, I really like this gradient um, coming through due to the silicon. Um, and this rear is different from anything I've seen before. Um, usually polycarbonate play, uh, keyboards have the bottom piece look darker, but here the top piece looks darker due to the black plate. I think that's kind of neat. It does kind of look like GMK muted <laughs> on camera, but I assure you this is just regular 9009. All right. First impressions. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's stiff. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say, it's stiff. It's, it's aluminum, it's an aluminum plate, it's a metal plate, eight mounting points. Uh, plus like six additional mounting points as a tray, uh, plus two screws holding the PCB into the plate. So, you know, it's stiff. Uh, do I think there's any difference being made by the top mount? Uh, it's hard to say without uh, having like a, like a softer plate, but... Like, I, I assume it was never the goal to uh, get a soft typing experience going. 
Um, I'm assuming the top mount is solely for marketing purposes. I, I don't, I don't think they really do anything, but, um, don't, don't take my word for it. Um, just yet. Uh, let me test this fully. Uh, I'll test it with and without the screws, um, in various positions and all that stuff. Um, it is a tray mount with fancy words. Yeah, I think so too. Cut a hole in your desk and don't use a board with no plate. Glue PCB to... <laughs> okay, that's getting difficult to parse, dude. Alright. Let me... Bring this in for the typing test. Oh god. Watch me drop my Xeno. What's the aftermarket price on these guys nowadays? Extremely sad to see people paying, what, $950 for it? That's, I saw one go for that much. All right, reposition the mic. Recording is on an Rode NT-G5, which has a frequency response that cuts the bass um, significantly and boosts the highs uh, just a little bit on the top end. Uh, as always, not representative of anything, blah, blah, blah. Um, here it goes. First impressions is that, um, in terms of sound, uh, it sounds like every other um, every other uh, keyboard that's been stuffed to the brim with foam nowadays. Um, it's kind of what sounds like uh, the D sixty five when you have both the play foam and the uh, case foam in there as well as the Vega when you have both foams in there so you know it sounds about as expected um, do I think that's bad uh, personally I'm not a fan but I know a lot of people are are sort of fond of that sound profile that uh, super muted uh, top end uh, accentuating kind of kind of a uh, dampened sound experience but you know preference i guess am i anti-foam yes um i it's kind of a hassle to do it right now but i will uh, make sure to include uh with foam and without foam for the review uh, i don't think i'm going to be doing this review soon but maybe maybe i'll do like a shootout between all of the all of the budget entry boards um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, before we move into, I don't know, general q and I'll, I'll wrap up my thoughts on the board. Um, NK65 is a super budget board um, that's advertised to be uh, enthusiast friendly. Uh, it is under $100, I think with with somebody's coupon I paid like 
95 total. Um, it comes with uh, comes with nice carrying case, uh, a coiled cable, the keyboard itself with aluminum plate, PCB has per key RGB, um, and has modified top mount, which I'm gonna count as tray mount at this point. RGB looks like so. I mean, you've seen RGB before. Um, it has proper uh, switch positioning with the LED uh, hole uh, cut out pointing towards you. Um, it's got proper side profile with the case bezel coming up to cover the bottoms of the keycaps. Um, I guess I can't tell you if it handles shock correctly, but if the aluminum version, actually I have no idea what the aluminum version looks like, so I will reserve judgment there. Um, typing experience is super stiff. Uh, sound experience is, uh, I don't know, foamy? So yeah, that's my first impressions. Uh, would this be a keyboard that I would use a lot? No. This might be, uh, I don't know, a gift to someone. Um, do I think this keyboard is bad? Uh, absolutely not. This is a great keyboard for sort of an entry level uh, enthusiast. Um, but I do think that uh, as an enthusiast, um, if, if you're looking at buying something like this, there's a high likelihood of you moving on from it. All right, so that's my first impressions. Um, I'll first cover any questions regarding this board, uh, anything you want me to do right now, and I'll uh, sort of cover whatever, uh, whatever keyboards, uh, whatever questions you have. Uh, any interest in getting the cable car profit or the monokai, mono K, K, I have a K. Uh, profit, I'm, uh, whatever. Uh, is it possible to type without the silicon? Okay, while I work on the questions, I will try to find the screw locations. How do you feel about high rows switches? Uh, I think they're a meme, probably. You're better off building and improving a group by board than getting this in the first place. You may be right, but this, I, I don't know, the, the package, everything that it comes with, it might be unbeatable value. How much was the K? Very expensive. I think 400 to 500 was right. That's, that's one of the biggest downsides of the board. It is so expensive. I think most likely my conclusion is going to end up being that you should probably just get a tofu. Like, does this feel like a custom experience? Does this feel fill me with the same kind of uh, joy that I felt when I had my first aluminum keyboard? You know, it's hard to say. I hardly feel any joy when I get a keyboard nowadays, but I don't think it will. Which group by board are you going to get? for $95. That's true. Even even tofu is going to be pushing I don't know $150 maybe even if if you get like B stock case. Oh, that's a really good point. Um once you when you enter the hobby, uh, the biggest thing you're going to do is try out different switches. Um and that can be hard with pre-builds, so this definitely uh, opens up a whole world. How did I get this out? I lost one screw, so this one must not be screwed in. Yep. Oh, how the heck?
Oh, if you just shake it, it's all good. 180 not including switches. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. Maybe secondhand KBD fans? I don't know what the market's like nowadays. Oh yeah, the big advantage here is that uh, NK65 is continuously stocked. Uh, I mean, for now you have eBay scalpers listing it for double price uh, right after the sale goes live. But I think eventually market's gonna stabilize and reach equilibrium and you'll be able to buy this. I think there are several units of EE still in stock right now. I don't know if I agree with the comment about uh, this board being a safety bubble from entering the hobby. Uh, I would say the Leopold is a safety bubble because uh, from an from outsider's perspective, this is gonna, uh, a Leopold is like, wow, this, this feels great. And then you never look forward. But this, you know, when you're getting something like this, it, I, I feel that you must have some interest in getting into a hobby such as the mechanical keyboards hobby. How is the PC finish compared to other? I don't know if it's gonna be very comparable. Um, I don't actually have a PC board with me right now, but you know what, I can, I can go get one right now. Well, going for that walk really made all the difference. You know, every time I stream, I get sore for, for days afterwards because I'm sitting up straight for an hour. All right, so this is the best polycar finish board I have right now. It being the HBCP. And right off the bat, you can see, you know, it's not comparable. This is, this is a completely different texture. You know, that's frosted, while this, it's like, it's clear, maybe a slight bit of texture, but like you can see through it way better. Um, this, this sort of look has been the case for my other uh, polycarbonate injection molded keyboard, which was the Kumo. Um, very clear, that one actually was a little more clear than this. Um, Yeah. Oh god, this is such heavy wood. Speaking of heavy boards, this board, without the silicon, is not heavy. At all. And just putting these keys, uh, keycaps on, I can sort of tell that it's gonna sound like a Tata 68. Can you run your nails through it to hear the sound? I guess this is the NK65. This is the HPCP. Imagine using MX Master 2 and not 3. No comment. All right, so let me get you a sound test with uh, just the um, no silly.
All right. You know, uh, expectedly, this sounds very hollow, um, and it's it's not the uh, classic hollow metal keyboard sound. It's the classic uh, plastic uh, hollow sound. Uh, this the last time I heard this was on uh, excuse me um, on a uh, Tata sixty eight that I built up with um, Silent Inks, and those were just so like it was louder than a regular keyboard. The sound difference is stark, definitely. Um, I don't think even with silent switches this would be acceptable to use in a public space. Not that we're using anything in public spaces nowadays, but um, but the the weight difference is is something to note. If you're able to address the sound through maybe something like tissues, um, this might be a great travel keyboard. It weighs one pound and five ounces <laughs> or 600 grams. So I think that is lighter than HHKB, which is honestly hard to achieve. <laughs> All right, any other questions about this board or in general? It, it's so odd having a keyboard this light in my hands uh, that also doesn't like creak like the HHKB. This, like it feels, it's while it's light and oftentimes you're gonna think a light thing is less quality, this doesn't feel low quality. It feels all right. Looking forward to the Bluetooth version. I think that would be a great idea. Try foam modding. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't like foam. Do you prefer blockers? I prefer without blockers on a 65%, unless it's very specific. Um, would you recommend it? Loaded question. Uh, I would recommend it if you want to try a bunch of switches and there were no other uh, sort of easy uh, hot swap keyboards available. This seems like a good value, especially with the bag. I really like the bag. Um, <laughs> and it's nice to have a, like, a mostly standard 65% keyboard rather than something like the GK64 with the arrows scrunched up in here. Um, maybe for keycap compatibility and all that. So if you're just getting into the hobby, and you don't have that much money, I think this would be a good option. Um, mount and typing fuel, it is a top mount, tray mount, everything mount, so it's basically tray mount. Um, typing fuel, very stiff. Um, what is your favorite 65% layout? It would be this layout, but uh, these three keys replaced with two 1.5U. Does yours fit in the case correctly? Oh, good point. Okay, fitting it in. I know I've been raving about the case, but this, like, this doesn't feel premium. Like, this is clearly a cheap case, and that's okay. But I like the way it looks. It fits in the case without bulging at all. Feel fits nicely. It's not a hard case, but it's not like just fabric either. What entry board are you most excited about reviewing? I'm excited for the Kara, not because I think it'll be better than all of the others, but because it's so much more expensive. Uh, I get to be way harsher on it. Uh, silicone, ma, ma, ma. Favorite keycap profile is Cherry. Uh, hello from New York. 
Bauer will be better. Apparently. Novel key solve the crack issues of the case. I, I've heard about it. I don't see it. Let me look up close. I don't see any cracks. Oh, maybe a little thing here. But I don't think that counts as a crack. If you get up close, you can see sort of vertical lines in the finish, which would not be present in CNC polycarbonate. But I feel like polycarbonate was destined to be uh, injection molded, so I don't know if I could really advocate for um, milled plastic. Um, have you tried the F1 from Gion? I have not. Um, they seem hard to acquire. Um, oh, are the cracks just like anywhere? I don't see anything that's jumping out to me. Maybe they will develop over time. Purple one does definitely look like Game Boy. Hard to acquire and expensive as well, yes. So I thought a polycarbonate uh, as a material in the hobby would be a passing fad, and, and maybe it is, but this thing got in here sort of late, and I don't think it costs that much to produce once you have the upfront cost covered. Um, so in the form of injection molded stuff, I think it's here to stay but I don't know about uh, milled stuff. I haven't been seeing as much of those nowadays. Are you secretly Teha types? I am, I am not. I would have a much better stream. Um, Norbauer boards, uh, they seem to exist outside of the space I occupy, so I'm not really sure about those. They seem to be, there seems to be like an incredible attention to detail to an extent that I feel like I shouldn't use them because I scratch up everything. Any consistent markings in tight corners? Uh, let's see. Come on, focus. All right, it's just not gonna focus, I guess. I'm not seeing anything that really jumps out at me. There's there's something in this corner here. But, I mean, for $95, I, I don't know if you can really start to nitpick to this extent. <laughs> Are the stock stabs all right? They have loop pre-applied. And they're not the worst. Honestly, especially the space bar is not that bad. But I think you'd want to apply some additional lube on it. One interesting thing is uh, typically um, unclipped stabs will feel mushy, but I think these stab inserts don't have the tiny little uh, legs on top. The <laughs> so stab legs look like this with like a tiny little thing here and they bump up against the PCV make causing mush. Um, these guys still have this leg but remove this so uh, it doesn't feel mushy. So I don't think you really need to clip it any further. Did you get it with a polycarbonate plate? Oh, I didn't know uh, they had polycarbonate plates, but this has the aluminum plate. Um, are bubbles and cracks in ingestion molding keyboards a big issue? I don't know. Uh, I did see a couple bubbles in the 
um, the, the minivan, the Kumo, but it wasn't super bad. Turn board, please. You can see there's a whole lot of space underneath the PCB. And I guess one thing that's going to be an issue is there's an inconsistent amount of it. And so you might have noticed this stuff sounds a lot deeper than this stuff. Um, not a big issue, but this angled piece of silicone sort of addresses that issue. Does polycarb even matter on tray mount though? Uh, if you have the right um, mount spacing, uh, polycarbonate plates can feel pretty all right. Turn the board on. Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> These switches don't support um, SMD, so I don't know if you're going to see anything. Also, the light is really bright. If injection molded, I wonder why no flip out feet. I think that must have introduced additional complexity because you would need to have like separate pieces here. Uh, probably not worth it. Not a lot of people use it anyway. Um, am I going to replace the stabs? Uh, I'll try to make it better first and then I'll try uh, with some cherry stabs I have. Favorite plate material? Uh, I'm a fan of no plate first and uh, polycarbonate next. Um, what's the idea? Screw spacing for tray mount. Um, so poker mounts kind of like this here. So they're like screws right in the middle. Um, if you remove these two uh, spacings, then the middle main typing area is mostly isolated. And if you have something like a plateless build, you can really feel uh, major vibrations when you type. Um, this guy has, I think, sort of six here. So I don't think there's going to be an opportunity to be even. Is this the frost or the clear color? This is the clear. The RGB, I guess we have a little bit of bleed here. I think that's kind of neat. You don't see as much here because the PCB isn't here. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll do questions for like five more minutes and we should be set. Um, how does FR4 compare to PCM POM? I've had FR4 to compare against POM only. Uh, FR4 feels a little a little tighter, a little harder, maybe, um, but I didn't have a whole lot of time to play with it. Palm compared to PC feels like like tight, a tight trampoline versus PC is like um, a very large trampoline. Um, what mouse pad? This is uh, what was this called? Um, I don't know. It, this is this was the only. A uh, small desk mat they had on in, uh, in novel keys. Um, favorite case material? Uh, I'm fine with just aluminum. Is it possible to re replace plate mount screw stabs with screw in? It is not. Uh, for screw in stabs, you need a PCB specifically designed for it. This PCB is not designed for it. ABS is even tighter than trampoline. I have not tried an ABS plate. Um, oh yeah, I think Modern Life is it. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite board designer? Board designer, I guess, AIO3 because he seems to do most things right, um, namely handling shock. <laughs> um, but I, I, I don't have, a, a, I don't maintain a big designer or brand loyalty. Group by Runner, I think Novel Keys does pretty well. Um, actually, Mass Drop and Kono will refund uh, Group by stuff, which is a big plus. Uh, I know they have a bad rep, but from a customer and consumer point of view, uh, they're
probably a good bet. Um, do I have expectations for the GMMK Pro? So, I don't... You, people need to stop giving it hate before it actually comes out. That That's uh, irrational. Uh, my guess is that as their first foray into custom keyboards, they're going to be... It's going to be, like, mostly good. Um, but then they're going to have, like, one or two weird quirks. Uh, kind of like KVD fans. That's what I'm expecting. Is there any reason to use standoff between PCB and plate besides ease of hot swap? I think that's it. I'll, I'll have to test whether there's a uh, grounding involved. Why aren't you the biggest co keyboard content creator? It's because I'm bad at YouTube. I've seen a million content creators blast past me and I'm going to see a million more. And that's okay, I guess. Uh, favorite keycaps, uh, oh, GMK Honda, right, for sure. Uh, GMMK is unknown land, correct. <laughs> People also need to stop giving it hype. Yeah, like, <laughs> they timed it really well with the whole Satisfaction 75 thing. <laughs> but in, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a keyboard. <laughs> so, um, what about how Glorious doesn't have sound tests? So I think... That's a part about Glorious uh, missing community expectations. It's an aluminum keyboard. I think it's going to sound like a keyboard. I, I don't think... And you definitely shouldn't be making purchasing decisions based on keyboard sounds alone. The, the most sus thing about GMMK Pro that I, I see is that they didn't have any pictures or prototypes uh, when the sale went live. I bought into it because one for review and two because they're a big enough entity with like I don't know, a proven pro, uh, track record so it's probably safe but um, I would have preferred prototype for sure um, waiting for Hunderbyte R2 I hope that happens. Hunter, right? I, I wish I got more. <laughs> Are you on Keep Talk? I'm not. They could have done a sound test during the stream. So it seemed like both the people who had a had a keyboard at the sound test didn't have like a boom microphone. So they would have had to get their headphone up close to the keyboard. And I, I don't think I, I buy that this was a logistical thing. Why every good keycap set GMK? You know, there are others that exist. Like, I like CRP. I think they're nice. <laughs> I wish they had better reviewers for GMK Pro stream. Uh, I think um, there was a rep from GMMK uh, Glorious on the MechKeys Discord uh, saying, oh yeah, this was uh, not a well-prepared stream, but we'll improve on it next time. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, do you think they'll send boards for early impressions? I thought they sent it to a couple already, but I don't know. Um, when will I feature 40%? I hear they're very popular and everyone likes them, but for some reason they are really rare. <laughs> uh, 40%... Uh, <laughs> okay, people have been asking about Omnitype Dixie Mac, so I'm still salty over their um, GMK High Castle. Uh, for those that might not be aware, this was an interest check that went up on Geek Hack, um, and this was a key set that was inspired by the Amazon series Man in the High Castle, and it had a bunch of novelties that were uh, may arguably glorifying uh, Nazis and Imperial Japan, so uh, yeah. <laughs> um, like there was an offhand apology, but I didn't feel that the reaction was appropriate enough. So I am on a personal boycott until it is addressed. Uh, I guess them changing their name from Dixie Mac to Omnitype is a good first step. Kajal review when? 
uh, I don't. Dombros, thank you for watching my videos for two years. Anyone have the link for High Castle? It is deleted off Geek Hack, but. <laughs> so I think the thing that blows my mind is that somewhere in the somewhere in the IC he said, "Oh, you know, of everyone I showed it to, like fifty percent of people said it was okay, but." <laughs> Like, you ask 10 people and half of them say something's not okay. <laughs> you go forward with that. I don't know about that, dude. Uh. <laughs> Alright, uh, I think that sort of wraps up the stream. Uh, ended it on a weird note, but... Um, review of this guy is probably not coming up anytime soon. I'm sure there are other content pieces out there already. Um, maybe I'll do all of these all at once, so when the Portico and the Kara and whatever else ships. Um, but I guess, as always, don't expect a timely review. <laughs> Would I be open to reviewing viewer customs and vintage boards? I still haven't fully fleshed out how I would be accepting um, borrowed boards and all that to do, you know, fear of me zapping it and breaking it. So, uh, <laughs> sorry about the 2020 year wrap. <laughs> it took too long. Um, uh, as a sneak peek, IDV60 wins board of the year. Uh, worst board is LZ Physics. Don't buy LZ Phase. <laughs> um, and that's it. I think donations uh, even less uh, open to it at this time. But uh, thank you so much for everyone's support. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate all of you. And um, yeah, I uh, hope this was helpful. Um, I'll be coming back with uh, some more content, maybe two weeks, three weeks. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a good night and I'll see you later.